Okay, welcome to Supercharged SEO. This is lesson six, and what we've done so far is in the first one we looked at how SEO works. Then we've looked at the breakdown of a site. We've covered working with images, server speeds, a little bit about SEO history. And in this one, we're actually going to show you line by line how to SEO a site and a page, uh, and then put it right through into practice and just check it works. So next lesson after this, building powerful pyramids to make sure when you get it there, you hold it there. And then lastly, the perfect landing page in action. So let's go. So what we're going to do is we're going to use an example for one of my own sites to find some good keywords. We're then going to identify some strong images, use them on a live site and see if we can actually deliver the results. So I tend to use SEMrush um, for good keywords. It's one of those ones that works really well. So then we're going to use an image, go through to an image library and get some good images that will work. We'll add them to the site and then we will go back and improve the SEO in all the areas we've shown you so far. But the good thing about it is it's a live example. So SEMrush, I don't know if you've used it before, There's, it's a paid version. There is a free version as well which gives you some of the, uh, This I'm using the paid one, but there is a, there is a free version which does give you some of the information. Um, so the main thing where you, you need to start is what you want to be found for. What's the key search term that you're expecting someone to put into Google in order to find your result, uh, find your site as a result? Uh, now Google has got their own keyword planner which you can you can use, uh, but it doesn't offer you as many long tail search terms and offers more shorter ones. And the reason they do it is that they're trying to put more people in competition for sort of bidding for the same contested, expensive, harder to SEO search terms. So we're going to assume that you've already done your bit of research and in this example I'm going to use it for the search term business lists. So we're going to use the variants of that and we'll try and drive that, that type of keyword or that area of keywords right the way through the site. Um, but as I say, this is the paid for version of SEMrush, so you'll have a look. So the first thing you do is you put in the term business lists into here, you search for it. This is in the sort of keyword analytics. Uh, and then down here you can see that there are related keywords which you can click. When you click through to the related keywords it gives you lots of ones, it gives you a volume of how many there are and you can look at the full report in the bottom corner there like that and then that takes you through to the whole list. You can I, I tend to sort them by volume which you can see here so yeah sort there sort by volume and then this gives you the full list now as you see the ones before that they're not all relevant so I'm not interested in buy data electric email whatever electric marketing sorry scan UK I'm not interested in that so on this one mailing lists that's got a volume of 390 uh, searches per month which is a decent amount so and if you look at the ones below then it's, it's bigger than all of those so I always think well why not go in and hit the hit the big daddy right in the face so we're going to say mailing list is our search term we want to go for because it's a good one. And then what I'm going to do is create a new blog post or a page. So the advantage of a new blog post like this is it adds more content to the site. And by the time you then include your page titles, your URLs and your correctly tagged images, you're driving the keyword into the site much more. So it's only really effective if you're consistent with these keywords you use. Just using the same single term over and over again will just be seen as repetitive. Google will see you as being sort of keyword stuffing. So you need to aim for, you need to create variants of it, which is why I've got this mailing list for new business development as my sort of my variant here, um, as you can see. But you need to aim for sort of 300 words, write useful, unique text about your key search term, but try and focus on solving someone's problem. Uh, what would someone be putting into Google to, to try and find this thing? So the page title itself, remember, is super powerful for SEO. So it's one of those things to really focus on. And so for me here, you can see that's my page title, mailing list of new business development right at the front of the title. So that's what I'm going to call my page. And then on this particular software, that drives that straight into the page title. Now, the next part of it is the image. Images are essential for a couple of reasons. If they're attractive, intriguing, engaging, they sort of transform the effectiveness of the post. We've shown that already in the social media sections, if you've seen those. Uh, more people will see, see it, more people click through it, more people stay and read the content. But also by being savvy with your naming of the files and naming with your alt tags, you drive more keywords again into the code of the page. 
uh, and that will lift the ranking for it. Again, if Google is looking for a page that's about mailing lists for new business and your page is full of it into the image titles and all over the copy as well and the whole thing is about it, then you've got a much better chance of that page being ranked. So if you own your images, that's great. But if you don't, there's three image libraries I use which are, which are free or very reasonable and they are very good. So the ones I would sort of always look at first are Pixabay, Unsplash, um, those are two, a couple of good ones. Twenty twenty is a paid for one, but it's uh, it's very very good value. I think the images there tend to be about twenty dollars, uh, but they're they're pretty unusual and they're sort of user generated as well. So remember, I'm looking for a, a new business uh, search term or sort of mailing list search term. I've put in the search term laptop into this one because that's what I wanted to have a nice sort of laptop image. Uh, and then I've had a look at the images and picked which one that has the most likes to it. I'm not sure that's terribly scientific, but for me, a picture that's already been proved as popular should actually gain more engagement and hopefully get a bit more traffic. So you just need to download it and then rename the file. So that's what I've done here. Uh, so you can see there, I've called it mailing list for new business development, JPEG. Uh, so ideally put the search term that you want right at the front of that image title uh, and this is the bit that's often overlooked you can see all those ones below which are screenshot I could very easily have up uploaded those uh, but for me putting it into there and into the alt tag as well is a really powerful extra way of doing it so what we're going to do next the, one of the things that's often overlooked is minimizing the image this is using JPEG mini uh, but and you can see by putting it into there it's reduced the image size by what was the size before uh, uh, 61 kilobytes so even by doing that it's reduced it by two and a half times so it probably would have been about 150 kilobytes before and a small image will load faster which gives your page much much better chance uh, of going so this is the image all ready to go um, and then we upload it onto the blog and on here over here you can see I've got the ability to do um, the alt text as well which I said before so I've given it the same alt text uh, and that's alt tags are one of those things that's really really easy to overlook but again if the file name says mailing list for new business development and the alt tag says mailing list for new business development you've got mailing list for new business development into that page twice as well as it being on the page title as well so with some CMS's like WordPress you also get to add a description and a caption which appears under the image on itself and if you can why not throw it in it certainly can't hurt then with most CMSs again, WordPress, you can edit the URL of the page. So I'll get this one on here, as you can see, to be uh, down here, you can't see it because it's fallen off the end, uh, mailing list for new business development. If you're changing the URL of a live page, or one that you've already put live, make sure you put redirection in the page and the old uh, redirect the old URL to the new one and check all the links to that page to work properly because quite often there might be some hard-baked uh, URLs into your site as well so be a bit careful tweaking URLs but get them right in the first place before you put the page live it'd be crazy not to so you've got your page title here which we've seen uh, meta description uh, we've got 160 characters to play with with this one you can see on there it's taken automatically from the first 160 characters of the text on the page which is fine in, in this particular example because it says mailing lists the first thing uh, so you can see there the URL up here mailing list for new business development page title mail list for new business development uh, and on yeah and here meta description and it's in the URL as well so we've written written the post and then we've got it live ready to go so just upload it to the blog so there it is on the blog post so uh, that's it posted ready to go so then you've got a couple of options about what you can do uh, now that's live on the site if you want to give it a little bit of a sneaky kickstart, then you can go into Google Search Console that used to be Webmaster Tools. This isn't, it's not particularly needed, but it's one of those things that I think isn't going to hurt. So as you can see on here, I've loaded it up, then I've pressed Fetch and Render. So you can see that over here where I've put the URL in, uh, and over here, and then you can request indexing. So you, uh, Google will ask you to whether you want to render that. Um, you can crawl either only this URL uh, here or you can crawl this URL and all its direct links in this example I've only crawled this URL uh, but 
if you do, you can crawl a single index URL 500 times in a month, which is massive, but you can only index the whole thing 10 times a month. So think twice about pressing this button. Mind you, I've never used my allowance on that anyway, So and that's per site, so that's not uh, in your entire allowance, all the sites you've got. Uh, so that's worth doing. Then press go. And then I tend to use a bit.ly link. Uh, I use bit.ly. I know you can use Google URL shortener as well, but I think bit.ly gives slightly more information, funnily enough. And then you, if you log in or create an account with bit.ly, you can see which places your page has actually worked, which ones produce the most traffic. So use that same bit.ly link then through all of your social media channels, uh, and then you can see how it works. Now on there, you then work it right the way through all your social media channels and ideally if you follow the sort of like perfect social media flow chart so it's linkedin twitter facebook uh, instagram if you have it uh, all of those things just google plus obviously just push it hard through all of those uh, ideally with some promotional budget behind it uh, and then see whether it works so that's it there shortened a bitly and shared i've shared it to all the social channels which i'm not going to show you now because it would take too long so then let's just double check it. This was a few weeks later. I think it was about two weeks later. Uh, so I put the search term in mailing list for new business development. And there we are, 4th of November. We are there right at number one. And well, behind four adverts, obviously. Uh, so that's it. So that's your intro to SEO. That's how to, uh, we've shown you all around SEO and how you can actually do it yourself. In this particular lesson, we spent some time looking for a strong keyword and a phrase to use with SEMrush. We looked at the related keywords and how and looking for ones with good search volumes, good strong search volumes. We wrote a piece, we added over 300 words of content and made sure it was good and readable. Uh, and then we found a popular image that looks like it will engage and I think the one I found proves it works. We renamed the image to match the search term to and we included the alt tag as this is absolutely critical. And finally we added to the URL and the page title to reflect the search term too. Then we put it live and then we Asked in the glory of it getting straight to number one. So, with all that done, that's it for SEO in this section. In the next one, lesson seven, we're going to look at building link pyramids to try and protect and boost your positions. So, I will see you there.